Good afternoon and happy hump day to you. I'm Journey Taylor. The first half of this week has been filled with plenty of speculation, so let's jump right into it. This is what everyone is talking about. The announcement that Hall fans have been waiting for all week is finally here. And yes, Arkansans in Arkansas, it's actually happening. The man right here, John Calipari, is the new head coach for the men's Razorback basketball team. The news comes after days of speculations and rumors from fans and media outlets across the country. But things really started picking up steam yesterday morning after Calipari announced his departure from the University of Kentucky. And this morning, the University of Arkansas made it official. The Board of Trustees met this morning to approve Coach Cal's contract. THV 11 was there and learned several things about that five-year agreement. Calipari will earn $7 million a season, as well as a $1 million signing bonus. And of course, bonuses for making it to the NCAA tournament. Now the question on everyone's mind, what's next? Well, the new head hall will be introduced at a big celebration later tonight at the Bud Walton Arena. The festivities kick off at 6, followed by a press conference at 6.30. And THB 11 will be there for it all. We're going to have more on the higher tonight at 5, and then we'll also have the introduction live at 6. Well, we're taking a live look at I-430 South of the Arkansas River, and it's been a rainy day. Not the spirit that we have this morning with the excitement of the announcement, but hey, it's Arkansas, so we have to deal with it all, right? Good afternoon, Journey. <laughs> it was a soggy start to our Wednesday, and we still have some rain out there, but the intensity and coverage of the rain has really started to shrink. Here's the radar, and you can see no yellows really showing up across central Arkansas. All that is really shifted its way into Mississippi. We have some light rain still taking place from the metro down through Pine Bluff, DeWitt, over towards Clarendon, and also down to Fordyce. But this will be slowly winding down as we go into the next couple hours. But you notice more rain situated into Texas and Oklahoma. That is the final round of rain that we have to get through later today and also tonight. You also notice the severe weather outbreak that's been happening in the Mississippi and Alabama. With that said, there could be a strong storm that may try to produce some gusty winds or hail. The severe weather threat is one out of five. So that chance is very low. We are still concerned about the threat. There could be some localized flash flooding issues that flood watch continues for all the counties in the green from Little Rock down to the south all the way through this evening. I've got some drier weather to talk about and a really nice weekend coming up in my seven day forecast. Overnight, a new documentary made its way to Netflix centered around a social experiment inside Arkansas's Pulaski County Jail. Shortly after the trailer's initial release, the Pulaski County Quorum Court passed an ordinance demanding answers from the sheriff on how the show was made. But in a meeting held by the court last night, there seemed to have been no mention of either the show or Sheriff Higgins' response. However, according to Higgins responses, the show was filmed in the first half of the last year and earned the county a $60,000 check from the production company. Additionally, Higgins says all detention policies remained in effect throughout the duration of filming. And it's a pretty important day at the Capitol as lawmakers meet to discuss the state's budget, marking the start of the new fiscal season. At the top of the agenda, a $6.3 billion proposed budget, which calls for a 1.76% spending increase. Most of that cash could pour into education, and Arkansas learns the governor is set to give remarks during the joint session. We'll have those details tonight at 5 and 6. Searcy County will receive major funding. The U.S. Department of Commerce is sending down $1.7 million to the city of Marshall. That money will be used for the area's manufacturing industry, which will help renovation efforts. The facility is expected to create new jobs and diversify the area's economy. Heavy emotions being felt at Shorter College with the passing of their president, Dr. Jerome Green, earlier this week. The school now mourning with many consider a staple in the North Little Rock community. President Dr. Jerome Green died Sunday night at the age of 69, leaving behind a community which many say he always considered a top priority believed in what Shorter could offer and what Shorter had to offer to students. So the path to possible was Shorter. 
President Green's legacy is one that echoed throughout the city as a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated Methodist Episcopal Church in the HBCU community. Well, this afternoon, we know the fate of the first ever parents to be convicted for the actions of their child in a school shooting. On Tuesday, a Michigan judge sentenced both parents of Ethan Crumbly to 10 to 15 years in prison in connection with the shooting deaths of four students at Oxford High School in 2021. The parents of those slain students addressed both James and Jennifer Crumbly before they, of course, shared a testimony of their own. I am sorry for your loss as a result of what my son did. We were good parents. Defense attorneys say they believe the outcome of this case will set an example for other parents. A groundbreaking ruling by Arizona Supreme Court could nearly strip women of the ability to get an abortion. CBS's Natalie Brand shares the latest as lawmakers remain at a crossroad. Abortion access in Arizona is in limbo after the state's conservative Supreme Court reinstated a 19th century law banning nearly all abortions. While a lower court reviews the law's constitutionality, the state's Democratic governor is blasting the ruling. This is a devastating decision that will have huge consequences. Governor Katie Hobbs is calling on the state legislature to repeal the ban first enacted in 1864 before Arizona even became a state. They could uh, gavel in today and make a motion to repeal this ban and they should do that. I'm hopeful that they will. The 4-2 decision overrides Arizona's current 15-week ban and the court warned that all abortions except those necessary to save a woman's life are illegal with doctors facing a two to five year prison sentence. Today's decision should be celebrated and we're very hopeful that voters will recognize that life is a human right. Arizona is a critical battleground in the presidential race. Within hours of the decision, the Biden campaign boosted ad spending there and the vice president will visit later this week. To stop bans like this, we need a United States Congress that will restore the protections of Roe v. Wade. Monday, former President Donald Trump released a video statement saying abortion limits should be up to the states. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law. Back in Arizona, Planned Parenthood says it will continue to provide abortion services up to 15 weeks for a short period of time. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Well, developing in Maryland, state and federal leaders meet to met to discuss how to move forward after the tragic bridge collapse earlier this month. The state's governor spoke with the transportation secretary and other state leaders and are calling on Congress to act on an aid and recovery package. The meeting today was very emblematic of the kind of support that the state of Maryland has had from the very beginning. Because about two weeks ago, a part of our soul fell into the Patapsco River, a part of our landscape, and a part of what makes Baltimore, Maryland so special. Many businesses remain impacted by the port's closure as crews continue efforts to clear the wreckage. Well, something to consider before you send off your next piece of mail. It will soon cost you a little more to get a hold of first class stamps. The U.S. Postmaster General sending down a warning to postal customers to get used to, quote, uncomfortable rate hikes. The price of first class stamps will go from 68 cents to 73 cents, which is part of an overall 7.8 percent increase to take place this summer something officials say is key for financial stability. And with prices steadily increasing, a new report shows more adults believe they'll need more cash in their bank account before retiring, nearly one and a half million dollars to be exact. But of course, you can still take the proper steps to determine how to have a successful future. You figure out your spending, you look at your saving, you look at how long you're probably going to live and you plug into one of these retirement calculators. Okay. Retirement calculators can give you a better estimate of how much to set aside for the future. On average, Americans have about $88,000 put up for retirement. The job market continues to heat up when we return a look at the numbers, which suggest a bit of good news for folks getting back to work. Nathan.
Temperatures right now, Journey, are into the 60s, but I'm talking about 80 degree temperatures going into the weekend. Also, some gusty winds expected tonight. Let you know how high they could get coming up.